thank you again for listening and tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, this would be the morning. This is going to be the morning worship recording for May the thirty first, two thousand and twenty. And as I mentioned on the Sunday school video, we are planning to begin meeting here again on a uh, limited basis with certain guidelines in place on June the 21st, which is Father's Day, and I will be calling each and every person in the church and letting you know about some precautions that we're going to be taking. We want to be sure that we're safe and that we're wise. The Bible tells us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, and uh, if you're like me and you know people personally, or know of people personally like I have who have died from this virus and you know it is serious it's not gone away yet and I'm hoping and praying that it doesn't spike again so we want to start back meeting together and having church here in the sanctuary and in the building but we also want to be very wise so we had a meeting yesterday uh, my, the we being myself and our three deacons, Brother Dennis, Brother Chad, and Brother Wesley, and the four of us discussed and talked about a lot of things, and we came to the conclusion that we would try to start to begin back Sunday school at 10.15 on June the 21st, and then morning worship at 11 o'clock on June the 21st, that is Father's Day and that we will not start any of our evening services back until further notice. So starting on June 21st, Sunday school at 10:15 and morning worship at 11, and I will be calling everyone and letting you know about precautions that we want to take. And so uh, having said that, I am going to do what I had promised to do. If you know and been watching the videos, you know that when we first covered the crucifixion of Christ, I mentioned to you, you have to look at it from all four gospel accounts and also 1 Corinthians 15. And so you have to look at Matthew's account, Mark's account, Luke's account, John's account, which is what we're looking at today. And this will be the last sermon on the crucifixion or teaching on the crucifixion and 1 Corinthians 15. So we've looked at Matthew's account, Mark's account, Luke's account. We've looked at 1 Corinthians 15, but we have not actually read and looked at John's account. And as I mentioned, you have to look at all four accounts in all four Gospels to get the whole picture. And I may talk about that a little bit more as we go through. My main emphasis today, however, will be on just reading God's Word and trying to open my heart and hopefully you will pray that God would open your hearts to listen to God's word and be taught by the Holy Spirit from the words that he has written. Uh, so let's begin John chapter 18. We're going to see the Jesus' burial and arrest. We're going to see Peter's denial of Jesus and Jesus' arraignment before Pilate. We're going to read the entire chapter of John 18, and then we're going to read the entire chapter of John 19. And in John 19, we're going to see Jesus is scourging or beating and crowning with thorns, and Jesus is crucifixion, death, and burial. And so we're going to look at these two chapters today from the book of John. John chapter 18 and John chapter 19. And then when I'm finished, depending on how much time I have, I have a few other comments I may make. So let's begin John chapter 18, starting at verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and scorches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as Jesus had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. 
Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up the sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me shall I not drink it. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon, people, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. And Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and the officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What have I said unto them? Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defied, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again in Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, uh, Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, 
And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto him, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law we ought, he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and I have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Then said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with the vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and, they might, and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. 
And again, another scripture said, they shall look on whom they have pierced. And after this, Jesus, uh, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and alloys about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen cloths with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bear it. Now in the place where he was crucified there was garden, and the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never a man yet laid. There laid they Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. As I mentioned to you earlier, before we started, I started reading these two chapters, to get the full story, you have to read all the different accounts. And there's a lot of things that are pointed out in John's account that are not pointed out in the other accounts. Uh, one of the first ones being that we see in the first few verses, uh, they, Jesus asked them, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth, and Jesus said unto them, I am he. And God's word says in verse 6 that when he said, I am he, they went backwards and they literally fell to the ground. And that's not recorded in the other, any of the other places. So as I mentioned, you have to read all the accounts to get the whole story. Another example of that is in verse 10 where it says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Well, we know from the other Gospels that someone cut off an ear. We learn uh, in one of the Gospels it was Simon Peter. We also learn that it was the high priest's servant. We also learn in one of the other Gospels it's the right ear. But this is the only place where we learn not only that Peter did it, that it was a high priest servant, it was his right ear, but also that the name of the servant was Malchus. And we also learn from John's account that the apostle John was kin to the lady at the door and that it was because of John's influence that Peter was even allowed to go in so that he could deny Christ after being asked if he had been with Christ. So there's a lot of things like that throughout the Bible. If the Bible mentions something in more than one place, let me highly encourage you to read all the different places where it's mentioned because I've said this before, but I don't believe I've said it yet on these videos that I've been making. The best commentary on the Bible is always the Bible itself. The best commentary on the Bible is always the Bible itself. So many people, they read other things about the Bible, but sometimes we neglect the Bible itself. So I want to highly encourage all people who are listening or watching, let the Bible, God's Word, be the main thing. Read God's word prayerfully and carefully. Start with God's word. End with God's word. It's okay to read some commentaries and things if they're good ones, but begin and end with the word of God, and you won't go wrong. And pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you and to teach you. And so there's so much here, and I'm running out of time, but I do want to mention uh, Pilate asked Jesus, Are you a king? And Jesus replied, you say rightly that I'm a king. And this is in verses uh, 37. And if when we think about it, Jesus was, not only was he a king, but Jesus is the king of the Jews. Jesus is also a king of righteousness. Jesus was also a king of peace. Jesus was also and is also the king over all the earth. Jesus is also the king of glory. And Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So 
Jesus is definitely a king. And that's why he, would, he could say to Pilate, you have rightly spoken. He says, thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth, everyone that is the truth heareth my voice. Another thing I wanted to comment on is who actually crucified Jesus? Some would say the Romans killed Jesus because Pilate, the Roman governor, could have freed Jesus, but to preserve his standing with the mob, he willingly delivered Jesus to be crucified, and that is correct. Some might say the Jews killed Jesus. That would also be correct because the Jews are the ones that cried out, his blood be on us and our children, and they're the ones that cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Peter, later preaching to the Jews, pointed his finger at them and said, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put him to death. Some could say that it was God himself that killed Jesus because we read that yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to, Greek and, uh, to grief in Isaiah 53. And that would be rightly said. But also, and finally, we have to be willing to admit that not only did the Romans kill Jesus, not only did the Jews kill Jesus, not only did God kill Jesus, but we, everyone listening to me, everyone watching this video, every person on this planet is guilty of having killed Jesus because it was our sins that actually nailed Jesus to the cross. Jesus Christ died for all of us. And I encourage you, if you do not have a relationship with God, if God is just, you know, someone out there, the Bible says that you can have a close personal relationship with God the Father, but only through Jesus the Son. You have to admit that you're a sinner. You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart and life, and Jesus will do that and will come the Lord and Savior of your life. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you again, Lord. I thank you for uh, this opportunity to teach and read your word. I thank you for your precious word. Father, I do pray again for all the folks in our church. I pray for all the ones who've been affected by this coronavirus. I pray for protection for each and every person in this church and all the ones who are watching and listening to this. Father God, I thank you for your precious word. I thank you for your great gift of salvation that you were willing to die to give us eternal life. Father God, I'm glad that this world is not our home. We're just moving through. And Father God, once again, I pray that you will give us wisdom as we start back in just three weeks, Lord. I pray for protection and your watch care and that we would do everything according to what you want us to do and how you want us to do it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.